We're going to attempt to cover a fair bit of ground here and it's really important that you have the basis of the uh, capacitance in AC and introduction to AC videos, uh, all that information first. Uh, so, first of all, inductors in AC. Um, an inductor is a coil of wire uh, creating a, a solenoid or um, loop and remember the magnetic field is um, generated in there when a current flows through. So, uh, in a DC circuit, we've seen that uh, there's always some sort of resistance in there. In the DC circuit we've seen that um, an inductor will oppose the change. Remember so it opposes the change. So when you switch it on it takes a little while for the voltage to, to ramp up. Okay, so um, voltage over time it takes a while to ramp up and there's that time constant um, remember with the resistance over the inductance. Um, so, uh, an alternating current, um, it's, it's also slow to, uh, well, uh, <laughs> it opposes change, I mean that's just the nature of an inductor. Um, so I've drawn a DC circuit, let's make that AC. Okay, so uh, just to be clear, AC and DC. Um, heavy metal. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> bad jokes are part of all physics teaching, I, I believe. Um, all part of good physics teaching. Anyway, uh, the alternating current, um, the inductor will oppose the change as well. So it has this effect that uh, whenever the um, supply is trying to increase, it's going to oppose it. So it's going to peak the voltage across the inductor. Um, v, we'll call it VL because that's a symbol for inductance. Um, the V supply. The uh, if this is VR, we get a different color for uh, VL. Go to my green. It's going to oppose the change. So as soon as you see a big change starting, so right at point time zero there your uh, voltage is going to be peak because that's when the maximum uh, opposition to that current flow um, change is going to occur. So that's when you have your maximum peak. At the very top here, um, the inductor is going to have, uh, this is a flat, this is a zero gradient right at the peak. Um, and so the inductor is going to have zero, um, you know, it's not changing so there will be no induced voltage. Just rem remember that the um, so the, the voltage induced by the inductor is a negative change in flux over change in time. Um, so the change in flux only occurs when there's a change in current. There's only a change in current in the circuit when there's a change in voltage across the resistance because the current um, is in phase with the resistance voltage. I failed to mention that on an earlier video, um, but it makes sense because um, you need a voltage drop between two points for there to be, uh, or you need a current flow for there to be a voltage drop. If there's no current flow, there'll be no voltage drop because no energy is uh, escaping as heat through the resistor. But in any case, um, what we notice at each of these points, um, as we've been talking about, following the gradient, the um, capacitor lags behind, or hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm making a, one of those mistakes that are very common uh, in, in physics um, where the <laughs> it doesn't actually lag, it leads because remember as the time passes it hits the peak first of the uh, capacitor and then it hits the resistance so really important to catch that um, we saw that capacitors lag behind but inductors lead Okay, and it's the same by 90 degrees. And you can see from the graph why that is 90 degrees. It's because of when the maximum changes are occurring. So the slope is maximum. It's actually a turning point here. So it's actually almost infinitely maximum at that point. Um, is it infinitely maximum? Yeah, good question. You can have a little think about that. So uh, anyway, we've, we've looked at uh, the DC comparison. One thing to note is at a steady state, the DC circuit, the inductor is just like a piece of wire or a small resistor, it's nothing. But uh, in an AC circuit, it's continually changing, 
continues to change, that's our change symbol. Um, the voltage is continually changing direction, so there's always something to oppose, so that inductor is always um, peaking and dropping and peaking and dropping and uh, trying to upset things. Okay, so uh, if you can imagine, the higher the frequency, the more it's going to oppose. And if you get up to a high enough frequency, the inductor itself is going to produce, uh, you know, high enough frequency means a small time. That means that the voltage induced by the inductor, it's an L not a C, the voltage induced by the inductor over that small time is going to be much, much greater, which is going to lead to this at high frequencies being an open circuit, meaning it blocks AC. So a capacitor blocks DC and allows AC, but an inductor uh, blocks AC and allows DC. Interesting, isn't it? So uh, that's our DC comparison, just uh, going through that. Uh, we've already looked at phase as well. Um, it, it leads by 90 degrees, really important. Um, the reactants. Now, uh, we've already started on that a little bit too. You'll notice uh, if we have our, um, if we look at the voltage across the inductor, um, uh, compared to the current running through it, we get the same relationship that we have with Ohm's law. And if we took the gradient, we get a, 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 a something that has the, res the units of ohms. And remember, this is sort of like resistance, um, but we would call this the reactance of the inductor. And from Ohm's law, it equals the voltage across the inductor over the current in the circuit. Uh, I equals V over R. And again, we're dealing with uh, RMS values here. Because um, that would make it kind of tricky with this straight line graph if VL was not changing, um, it was changing. So that's that's RMS, and that's also why um, we can have zero current in the circuit. This is a very very tricky point. So maybe note this one down. You can have zero current in the circuit when when VR equals zero. Okay, when VR when the voltage across the resistor is zero, that means there's no current flowing through it, so there's no circuit current. But your, um, that's the maximum change in current, which is when the maximum induced voltage in the inductor occurs. So you can have a very high induced voltage at an instant in time when your current is zero. Okay, that can cause problems. That's why we do this calculation in RMS values. Very important, very, very, very important. Okay, so we've talked about the reactance of an inductor. Uh, a wee bit more is that the reactance of an inductor is affected by the frequency. It increases when the frequency increases. Um, and it also, the larger the inductance value, um, the more it will do. Remember, I've forgotten in my equation up the top, um, the larger the inductor, the greater the induced voltage. Um, I think I've been forgetting that in a few equations, but uh, what I've been focusing on proportionalities rather than uh, equations. But in any case, we come up with this as our formula for the reactance of an inductor, as an inductor is reacting to the change in the circuit uh, voltage and current to um, impede the flow of current. Um, and again, 2 pi f could be omega, so this also equals omega L. Um, very cool. Now, uh, final concept I wanted to talk about was this impedance. Okay, impedance. Because we've seen um, impedance is made up of resistance and reactance, and we also we reactance is made up for inductance reactance. Remember, it's XL. Let's put resistor R and the capacitor reactance. Now, uh, <laughs> because um, we might want to deal with the entire circuit, so that is fine. Um, the supply voltage, this is all RMS, remember, equals current times uh, some value. Okay, this is, this is Ohm's law for the entire circuit. It's an important, very important equation. We need this concept of impedance, which is Z. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of going about this in a little bit of a sneaky, quicky trick way because the video is getting long. But... Um, if we look at our phasors, oh, I forgot to mention phasors. The inductance is here. We do the voltage phases first because it leads, that is, it peaks before um, the resistance. Remember, it's rotating that way. And your capacitance one is down here. Um, 
which means it lags, 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there. Now the same is true for, um, we can draw phasors to represent the, um, the, the, the reactants and the resistance. So we have the resistance following the voltage across the resistor, as it has to, um, and the inductance following the voltage across the inductor and the reactance following the reactance on the capacitor. Um, and uh, you can add these as vectors to find um, this value of Z, Z, and it would be, let's ignore our capacitance for now, um, if we if we're dealing with just these two, the sum, that's where XC, uh, XL is, the sum of those uh, vector sum is Z, the impedant, impedance. So Z equals um, R squared plus XL squared, square rooted. You have to square root the whole lot to get Z. And um, because if we had capacitance to deal with as well, we would have the capacitance down here, we would have to um, add all three of them, but because the inductance reactants and the capacitor reactants are in opposite directions or exactly out of phase, you just take one away from the other. And uh, this, yeah, so you have resistance plus reactance where your XL minus XC or XC minus XL, depending if you're going in this direction or that direction, as long as you're consistent with your frame of reference, will help you work it out. So it's a lot of information, very useful though.